Welcome back to Nickelodeon. This comic corner, classic, last known classics. This is episode number 20, 23, 22, and double shot number 20, I think it's uh, 22, 12, uh, 2260. Now, um, Ultimate may or may not come today because I have been trying to catch up with basically two weeks worth of comic books. The only company I've done so far is DC. And Marvel, there's still about 15 comics left, basically. And I've only read 20. I mean, if you think about it, over the course of two weeks, Marvel released 38 comics in two weeks. And I'm only at 23 comics in. So it's going to take a while. But I will definitely hopefully get a chance to Marsha Magic and Muscles and Case Close Day. But first, we're going to do the first of four straight comic corners. Yes. This one in particular, it's going to be a digital one. Next, it's going to be physical. And then the one after that will be partially physical, digital and physical, and then another digital one. That's basically how it's going to work. Uh, for this one, we're discussing first, Doctor Strange, Strange Tales. Yeah, that's what it's called. This collects all Doctor Strange appearances. All, basically collects the entire 19 issue of line. Mostly put, it's the Doctor Strange issues. Uh, there's one full issue in here, issue 7. Now... He does share the book with Cloak and Dagger. Yes, Cloak and Dagger. Who cares care pay by excuse me, created by Bell Manslow. Now, you might be asking, Nick, the strange the Doctor Strange issues are, stories are in trade here for the second volume. Is the Cloak and Dagger one in the trade? The answer is yes. Yes it is. It is collected in two separate trades. I have no idea why in the world Marvel did this for. But they did. No, seriously, they did. <clears throat> if you really care about Cloak and Dagger, the earliest show was released back in 2009. A lot of it was released like in the last, uh, in, like basically in the last six years. Uh, the first one is collect the first two issues. Their their rook. This book is collected in Cloak and Dagger, Lost and Found. The rest of the book is collected in Cloak and Dagger, Predator and Prey. Yep, and there's still more Cloak and Dagger stuff. Yes. Now, I really enjoy Cloak and Dagger. <clears throat> I'll all my favorite characters. Uh, <clears throat> I will eventually cover their more appearances soon. <clears throat> Mostly putting Issue 7, just the team-up story between them. Mostly putting a case Doctor Strange. This is a continuation of basically Doctor Strange Volume 2, which ended. Now, I don't think it was in due low sales. No, I think Marvel wanted to try something different with Doctor Strange. Maybe they want to... It could be because maybe at, the, at that point the sales have been slipping for the book. So they said, end that book and put him in Strange Tales. You need to leave me a few minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm just... Okay, so apparently I'm leaving. I'm just going to try to get this one book. So, throughout these issues, basically, of Doctor Strange with Clea a little bit. And, of course, there's also with Topaz in here as well. Yes, Topaz. Who basic is also stuff in here with a woman named Victoria. Now, if you're really curious to who wrote this entire run, it was Peter Giles. Yes. Now, I definitely do think this was a good idea to do. You know, an actual like bring back the title. Yeah, basically, you have Doctor Strange in the start of this book. It's Topaz, Sarah Wolf, Clea, Wong, and someone named uh, Rethroth. Basically, a kind of like a mentor to them. He basically first appeared in the penultimate issue of Doctor Strange Volume 2. And he is here for pretty much this entire run. He later appears in Doctor Strange Source Supreme Book, where he's around there until around issue 52 of the book. Yeah, so Sarah Wolf herself, what all like basically all of his characters during this book, in pretty much like every single issue, she of course uh, was here for the first four issues, left for a while, and then came back for the uh, two or three remaining issues of the book, we were returning for Doctor Train Source Supreme, where she was there until issue forty three. In the case of Clea, still on this very day, Topaz last appeared like about twenty years ago. But yeah, mostly put, just Doctor Strange continuing what he was doing from his own book.
and mostly put basically it just Doctor Strange battling of course his various foes his, you might be thinking does he battle Baron Mordo well he battles El Wyomental for the first two issues of this book and then for issue number three fights so then cuts who was appearing at the end of 20 up here guys from the book he appeared for one issue of that book and then he returned for issues three four and six and he was gone in in four is the wings of needless sorrow and they were here from issue four until like the fight until like issue 15 pops up like three more times afterwards and that's pretty much it for them Mostly put the wings of sorrow, or just basically like a um, an item that becomes rogue, and he has to basically deal with it. And seven, of course, is the team up ish. Uh, not two, uh, five. Five is basically face on, uh, basically deal with uh, the return of the new defenders. Yes, they apparently got killed off at the end of the of their run, so they were brought back here in brand new bodies. Uh, the members of the time were not like, you know, Iceman, Archangel, um, Beast. No, the members were Valkyrie. Yes, Valkyrie, Manslaughter, Interloper, and Andromeda. Andromeda, if you're curious who this woman is, this woman is the daughter of Atuma. Yes. Yeah, she's a two, she's Atuma's daughter. And she appears throughout these three issues that pop up in Doctor Strange. Which the whole thing with New Defenders gets wrapped up in issue 7. Which of course features a team with, with of course Cloak and Dagger. And then with the very next issue the back to speed of Swift book again. Also in issue 8 fights someone called Kulu. Which is an old film from his uh, original Doctor, from the original Doctor Strange from the original Strange Tales book. And <clears throat> His last appearance, part of appearing in this book, was back in Strange Shield 50, and he was here for issue 8 into our issue 17. Yep. Now, if you're really curious, Peter Giles did write pretty much this whole run. Yes, he did. It, so, he finally becomes a supporting character, and then fights off these, uh, this, this creature in issue 9, known as the Gaza of Nara. It's basically a demon. Who only appears just for issues uh, nine and ten. At one point in the in the cloak cloak dagger book, uh, cloak is declared well gone, and basically he you have her take a book briefly. And after the whole thing with that demon taken care of in issue number eleven, they deal with the old ones. This book is just simply just a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we do see Return of Issue 12, Return of Victoria Bentley, who was last seen back in Doctor Strange, Volume 2, Number 68. That was her previous appearance. In this book, she actually shares a kiss with Doctor Strange, and she's sort of, in a way, a previous love interest of Doctor Strange. She's sadly no longer alive in the comics. No, she got killed off by Bob Harris in an issue of Avengers. In a backup story. Yes, they kill off a love interest of Doctor Strange, and a backup story. Yeah. Yeah. And of course basically like. And she, she's only here just for a few issues and she's gone. Yeah and then she pops up in the uh, Black Knight book. She's here for two straight issues and issue 18 and then she's done. Yep. Yeah, they also find a creature named uh, Summer Gorth, who is a long time Doctor Strange villain. Yeah, I do mean a long. He's an old villain who Doctor Strange first fought back in Marvel Premiere. And he still occasionally finds some very. I think at one point there was a version was killed by Angela. Yeah, there was a version of the creature killed by Angela. And he only appeared just for just for about three straight issues 13 and 15, and he's done. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, and you could say basically toward the end of this book, you could see basically, well, my, my guess is Doctor Strange book must have been catching on really well in this book. 
But my guess is Marvel probably plan to keep the book around only about 19 issues. I highly doubt they probably keep it longer than they probably wanted to. So the book ends with issue number 19. But the cover of the book is done by Mike Manelia. It was the creature of the thing from Roth. This uh, one-shot monster that Doctor Strange finds in the final issue. And then, like, immediately after this book wraps up, he gets this brand new ongoing series with Peter Giles as the writer of the book because, of course, he did a great job with this book. And, the, and that book, lasting for a shocking 90 issues. 90, which made it the longest-running book of the entire Doctor Strange franchise. No book under the name Doctor Strange lasts as long as this one since then. Marvel has tried, but it just seems as though people are just not all that interested. Or the fact that he, Marvel doesn't like, like keep books around for a long period of time. Because, well, I'll talk more about that when I get a chance to talk about Doctor Strange. We'll talk about it in a future video. But I'm going to set it into here because I have to go. When I get back, I will work on the second half, which basically will be a trade for Marvel Masterworks, Fantastic Four, and it'll be other ones. And hopefully some anime. Be back part two. Bye.